Hi folks, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden and today we are going to work on a pretty simple necklace using uh, beads from my Found Objects Challenge Bag from Thunder Horse Descendant. Like I say, it's going to be pretty simple, but I think it's going to be really pretty. Let's turn down and I'll show you what we're going to do. As I say, this is going to be a real simple necklace. I have the beads here in this tray. This is extra beads in case we need them, but I think I have everything we need right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and put five of these crystal rondelles in the bottom. Yes, these crystal rondelles were from the um, Found Objects Challenge Kit, as were these little uh, turquoise uh wooden beads. So what we're going to do, we're going to put these across the bottom and then we're going to, um, we'll put spacers in too, but we're, these are going to go seven, then another crystal, seven, another crystal, and then another seven on both sides with spacers in between everything. So let's um, get some wire out and we'll get started on this. So I have got some white quartz softlex medium and I've pulled out a length and put a um, bead stopper on this end. So now what we want to do is we want to start with a ball spacer and then a washer spacer. Roll those down to the bottom there. Now we're going to go with a seven of these little wooden bead, turquoise wooden beads with a a washer spacer between each one. I think that's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. So now we want a ball spacer. Come on, baby. There we go. And then one of the crystals. Again with a ball spacer. And then a washer spacer. And we go back to the next seven of our green beads. Six and seven. Washer spacer, ball spacer, crystal, ball spacer washer spacer. Isn't that pretty so far? So now we go back and we do another seven of these guys.
one, two, three, four, five, six, one more. And now we start the middle focal part. We should still have enough beads for the 21 here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So this is the other side. Well, as well as some of these washer spacers here. So now we want the um, ball spacer and the first, first of these crystals. And then another ball spacer. Come on, wall. Boy, you guys are being difficult. There we go. Another washer spacer, another ball spacer. Will you go on now? There we go. I guess you want it in that spot. So now we're going to just put the rest of these crystals on just like this um, with the, the uh, ball spacer, washer spacer, ball spacer between each one. And we're going to put five down here. So this particular one is our middle point. These are such pretty crystal rondelles. So now we're just going to put ball spacer and then washer spacer and then start with our greens again. So we're now going to go up like this side over here. With the seven green with the washers in between the crystal and then the seven crystal seven. So now we can dump these back out because we'll have the uh, proper amount that we're going to need here. Now, if for some reason I didn't, I do have extras right beside me here. But So there we go. Now we're going, as we can see, we're going up the other side now. And this is our focal area right here with our five crystals on it. Now, as I said, this is a pretty simple necklace, but I think it is a stunning necklace. Um, for even for its simplicity 
with these uh, crystals in amongst our little wooden beads and our gold washer spacers. One more. And then our washer spacer again. That is our seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. Now we want our ball spacer and our crystal and our ball spacer. Washer spacer. Now we're going to put our last seven gold, um, of the greenish turquoise beads on here. One, two, three, four. and seven. Whoa! Where'd you go? Ah, oh, right here. <laughs> Some of these little wood ones have little, like, splintery like spots inside. So there we go. That should be our last one. Yep, there's seven. We have one extra ball spacer here. So get our and we can cut our wire off because we've got it all strung up now. So get our clippers Clip our wire right here, and we have all of our beads strung. So there is what it's going to look like. Now we just have to put our uh, our uh, crimp tubes on and crimp it down, make it you leaving making a loop at the end, and put some uh, a clasp on it. Isn't that pretty? I think it turned out is turning out really nice. Got a couple of crimp tubes out, and I'm just going to put a crimp tube on the one side. Go back through. Now, one of the reasons, even though this is going to make a little ball here, I left the ball spacer on because these beads are big enough that if I hadn't our um crimp tube would have simply gone into this bottom um, bead here, unfortunately. So we're going to tighten that up to where I think I want it. And then we're going to get our crimping pliers out. I use magical crimpers. We'll put our crimp right there in the middle and squish. Then we're going to turn and squish. And we do that a few times till when you put the pliers on, it doesn't uh, need, it won't go down anymore. So we'll put our, some of our beads back on here. This is plenty. You only need a couple. Actually, you don't need any at all, but I like a couple. So, so now we're going to roll our beads over to the other side. And we'll put the crimp tube on this side. Now you'll notice I left a little loop, of course, when I did this, because we're going to put a jump ring in that spot. So roll this around some. Now this side you have to keep tight with the extra thread when you um, when you are 
bringing your wire up because you now do not have this side taking the extra line. We're done with it. It's there. So pull this up and push this to where it needs to be. Now this could use a little bit more. Put our crimp tube right in the center here. And squish and turn and squish. Now see how I mean when it's open like so? Now when my squish, we're going to take it down a little bit more, but when I go to the next one, it'll still go down a little bit and so on. But as we get around it, see it it's barely um, showing that it needs to squish anymore. So there we go. There's our crimp tube squished. Now we're just going to trim this wire off this side. Now since the beads are all plenty big enough, you don't have to worry about whether the wire will go in there because it just normally does. So now let's see how long this ends up being. I think it's going to be about 18 inches, maybe 19. So from this bead up to here is see it's a little bit over 18 so by the time we get our hardware on it may even be 20 but it's going to be probably 20 inches when we're done here so now I have to get my jump rings out a large one for one side and a small one for the other and a lobster claw unless I decide to use those are bronze there's a gold one. Maybe we'll use an Old Faithful. Now this is the smaller size of Old Faithful. I have, I think, some silver in the larger size, but not gold. These are all silver, so... So we will... trying to decide if I want to use one of these or a lobster. These are, uh, those, like I said, these are the smaller size, so go down in there, baby, so I can close it back up. But this is a ball and socket, so you just push and then push again. So they hold pretty good. So I think we'll use this. So what we need then is just two of the smaller, um, medium size uh, jump rings. I'm getting two jump rings. This is the medium size of our oval jump ring. And we'll just open one of these babies up go in through one of these little loops and then through our ball and socket one side of it close her up now we'll get the other side and open it up through the other loop and then we'll bring our ball and socket up here and go through the hook on the other side and close it up and there we go our necklace is finished
So I decided, like I said, on the ball and socket. They're pretty simple. You just pull it apart, put it back together. And there's our necklace all finished. Let's measure it, see how big we ended up being. And I'm pretty sure we're going to get at about 20. Not quite, but pretty darn close. So about 19 and a half, 19 three quarters. There's our necklace. Isn't that pretty? I think it turned out very stunning and elegant with the crystals and the uh, turquoise. Um, these are wood beads, but they're still they still turn look really cool in this um, with this the crystals and the gold washers. So. All done. Ugh. So there you have it. Our completed necklace using the crystals and the turquoise beads from my um, Thunder Horse Descendants Found Objects Challenge. It turned out quite lovely. I think anyway. Now, I've noticed that some of the little wood beads want to go sideways to others, and I think that's because they have, like I said, little splintery pieces inside them. But I think it turned out really pretty. Now, I know that on the camera it's looking very blue, but it's actually sort of greenish color. There, it's more like that color that you can see right there. So, I think it turned out really lovely. If we put it on, come on little ball, go in your socket, it turns to be about like so. And with a low neck shirt, that looks really pretty, isn't that gorgeous? I love those crystals. They are so pretty. Anyway, as I said, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden, and we have been using beads from our uh, Thunder Horse Descendants Found Objects Challenge to make this pretty necklace. Hmm. Oh, I was pushing it the wrong direction. Didn't want to come off. So, there we go. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.